Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session, Five Reasons Why Open Telemetry is the Future of Observability. First, quick introduction. My name is Steve Flanders. I'm a Senior Director of Engineering here at Splunk, uh, one of the founding members of both the Open Telemetry and the precursor project called Open Census. Very much involved with the project, including uh, on the Open Telemetry Collector, as well as the website. I have been in the monitoring and observability space for the last decade, uh, previously working at VMware in the logging space uh, at Omniscient, which was recently acquired by Splunk in the APM space, uh, and now working on a metrics platform called uh, Infrastructure Monitoring. So really excited to be here with you today. So in case you're not familiar with OpenSymmetry, basically what it is, is it's an open source project, a collection of tools and APIs and SDKs, with the idea being that it helps you uh, generate, process, and emit telemetry signals. This would include things like metrics, logs, and traces. It actually does not provide a backend. So it's basically everything that you deploy in your environment. So think instrumentation in the application or data collection type capabilities, uh, and instead supports a variety of both open source and commercial backends to send the data to. So basically you have configuration and choice every step of the way in order to help you solve uh, basically observability problems. This could be like availability or, or performance related things. Now, uh, Open Symmetry is the second most active project in the CNCF per uh, CNCF dev stats. You can actually go look this up online. Uh, very exciting project. It's the, the only project with more activity is currently Kubernetes, which is also part of the CNCF. Uh, I want to walk you very quickly through the components. So basically, there's a specification. This is an open standard. It's the foundation for everything that is open telemetry. It's basically a superset of uh, other standards that are out there. This is how it can support things like Jaeger in uh, tracing or Prometheus for, for metrics, as well as uh, vendor backends. And then there are two reference implementations on top of it. There are instrumentation libraries, basically a single library per language. All major languages are supported, Java, JavaScript, Go, Python, PHP, Ruby, .NET, um, you, you name it. And uh, basically, this single instrumentation library is responsible for kind of generating the, the telemetry data from your app. Uh, it offers both manual and uh, automatic instrumentation, uh, so you can actually code it into your application itself or through runtime dependency changes. You can do byte code manipulation of the code uh, to generate the telemetry data. There's also a collector. It's basically a single binary that can be deployed in a variety of different form factors, including like as a sidecar or a daemon set, uh, could be an aggregator or gateway component that's run like per data center or per region uh, to do like aggregation of data. Uh, but it basically uh, receives processes and exports data, and it's able to actually uh, translate into a variety of different formats. So let's walk you really quickly through the five reasons why open telemetry is really so exciting in the observability space. Uh, the first is when you think about all the different signals here kind of represented as telemetry verticals, the tra tracing metrics logs, it's three different types of data that you need to collect. But for each of these different types, you have a bunch of different layers of that actual uh, instrumentation. You have like the APIs, the implementations, uh, wire formats, interop formats, all the data infrastructure and the like. So for each of these combinations, you have to have a solution. Uh, and like in the case of traces, metrics, logs, you need to have that per language in the case of the application. Uh, in the case of infrastructure, we already talked about different form factors. How do you kind of handle all of that? Well, open telemetry provides a single solution for all of it. You don't have to use all the components, but if you wanted to, you could, and you would have a single solution that you could rely on for this that's completely open source and completely vendor agnostic, which is pretty exciting. Number two, you have full control of your data. So the idea here is that you can collect anything, everything, and then through configuration. So for example, here we have the open telemetry collector. I kind of already mentioned it has this notion of receivers, processors, and exporters. Well, you can configure it through YAML and you can tell it what you want to do. So for example, you might want to receive in one format, but export in another. You can do that through the configuration. Maybe you want to do CRUD metadata operations, create, remove, update, delete. That's possible too. Uh, maybe you want to like redact information or like filter it out so you're not sending all data to a, a backend. That's possible. And maybe you want to send the data to two different backends. Maybe you're exploring two different solutions, or you want to have a, a local copy as well as maybe a, a SAS a copy of the, of the data. All of this is, is made possible. So you choose what to, what to do with the data that you're collecting. 
Uh, next up, we would have the ability to basically uh, get to root cause analysis, so mean time to resolution here, through context. So if you're familiar with distributed tracing or uh, the application performance monitoring space, the distributed tracing allows you to basically pass context with each of your requests, and that way you can actually determine uh, how, how the call stacks are in your environment, as well as where an issue might originate from and how it propagates through your system. So very common in the, in the tracing space. Uh, the open telemetry supports the W3C trace context open standard, as well as a variety of other open source standards, like, for example, Zipkin's B3 format. But this same exact notion of context doesn't really exist with metrics or logs today. But in the case of open telemetry, given the specification, it actually does. So you have the ability of actually stitching this context together. And that way, regardless of kind of the signal that you're using, you can get some uh, rich and powerful information. Uh, why does this matter? Well, I mean, you can kind of see a visualization of it on the right hand side. Here's what it might look like if you were Ca capturing at least distributed tracing information. First, you can build a service map. Next, you can kind of clearly see here, like the currency service has a bunch of errors, uh, also very high latency, uh, over 1.47 seconds uh, into the checkout service. Uh, you can also see that your message queue here, the uh, placed orders queue, um, is uh, experiencing some latency and some errors as well. Uh, in this case, the, the cart service is receiving a ton of traffic, but no, but no errors, not a lot of latency, so it seems to be behaving appropriately. Uh, so very quickly here, without a lot of other context, we know a lot about our environment already, which really helps helps the, the problem isolation and getting us to root cause uh, 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 resolution. Uh, I already mentioned the open standards, but what's the power of the open standard of open telemetry? Really, it's data portability. And uh, let me try to kind of represent that for you. One thing this standard provides is this notion of semantic conventions. Think metadata or kind of key value pairs. It's a normalized way of representing objects in your environment. For example, maybe HTTP or REST calls, uh, databases, functions, and the like. There's a standard for these in open telemetry. And if the back end that you're sending the open telemetry data supports it, you can do some pretty creative things. Like maybe I have an application that I own and I control, but I'm using a cloud provider database that I don't control and I cannot instrument. Well, if I use open telemetry instrumentation in my app, then I can actually infer things about the database that I'm calling. I can at least get red metrics, requests, errors, and duration. Uh, I can also try to help identify if the problem happened in my app or in the call downstream, uh, and I can actually vis visualize the, the, visualize this in my in my service map, like I demonstrated on the on the previous slide. So that's very very powerful. The other thing that the Open Standard provides that's kind of uh, more interesting that you don't typically see in the in the telemetry space is this notion of resources. So think like infrastructure information, like which container is it in and which pod on which host and which, I don't know, EC2 instance or whatever environment you're deployed to. Again, there's a standard uh, defined for how you actually would add this metadata and Open Telemetry will do it for you. Why does that matter? Well, if I have my application layer information and I have my infrastructure resource information, again, I can get to problem isolation a lot faster. As an example here, you can see, I have a currency service that's experiencing some errors. It appears to be in multiple regions, like US West one clearly has some errors, but uh, there are plenty of requests that are actually succeeding. It's in a particular Kubernetes cluster. Again, some errors in that US West one cluster, but very clearly I can see here that the pod name, currency service, and this unique identifier, only this pod is experiencing problems. 100% of the errors are coming from this pod. Well, now I already have like problem isolation. I can go kind of quarantine that, that, that pod off. I can go spin up a new instance to kind of mitigate the situation. Then I can go investigate and determine like why this, this pod is experiencing problems. This is the power of, of open telemetry. And then finally, really everyone is contributing and adopting open telemetry. What do I mean by that? Well, like all the major cloud providers, both contribute uh, engineers that are contributing to the project, but they're also adopting it themselves. For example, Amazon has a distribution of the uh, open symmetry instrumentation collector that they'll actually run on, on your behalf. Um, Azure and GCP have kind of similar capabilities where they actually provide some insights from the open symmetry data of their uh, services that you're consuming. Every major vendor you can think of is involved with, uh, with the project. A lot of end users, not only are they adopting it, they're actually contributing to open telemetry. I provided a few examples here on the slide, but I think this really speaks to this is an actual pain that uh, end users and companies are, are experiencing today and really something needs to be done. And then finally, there's broad kind of open source adoption and support here too. Things like uh, Spring or, or Open Metrics or Fluent Bits, even Envoy, uh, all these projects are looking at open telemetry and have some amount of adoption for it. I think Jaeger is a, is a great 
story here. They had their own collector. They now use the open telemetry collector. They had their own instrumentation libraries based on open tracing. They're now leveraging the open telemetry uh, instrumentation libraries. So this is kind of the, the power of the project, basically everyone coming together, uh, seeing the value and really helping make the project be successful. So there you go, five reasons why open telemetry is the future of observability. I really hope you enjoyed the talk and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the open telemetry community soon. Thanks so much.